AccuCare Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Brick, New Jersey offers a state-of-the-art facility with all the best and current treatments. With athletic trainers, massage therapists, and doctors of physical therapy, AccuCare has everything you need to stay healthy and perform at the highest level. Cupping, stretching, laser therapy, compression boots, and a full-body cryo chamber are just some of what you can expect at AccuCare. Check out their website and social media links in my bio. No prescription is needed to see them. So, so call them today and start feeling and performing at your best. Again, thank you to AccuCare for sponsoring the Shore Football Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AccuCare High School Football Preview Show, Monmouth County Edition, presented by the Shore Football Report. And today, we will talk Long Branch Green Wave Football with head football coach, first-year head football coach, Coach Chad King. Coach, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Awesome. We got so much to talk about. There's so much excitement at Long Branch. I've seen you a couple times in the summer, and uh, I've seen you smiling because you know you know you got some some pieces there, and and this is something fun, something probably you were looking forward to do for a long time, being the head football coach at Long Branch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, pleasantly surprised, excited, anxious. All, 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 all the above. Yeah, all <laughs> the above. All the above. We're gonna take a timeout. All right, and we're going to talk briefly of two big news that happened in short conference, and it involves me and my <laughs> my program, and then we'll get to talk to about about you. But we have now a sponsor. We have AccuCare in Brick, uh, Pam Anthony, the founder and the owner of the physical therapy place in Brick. She's awesome. We have the same uh, views, expectations of athletes. She wants to reach out and do as much as possible for all the communities in there. And you know as well as I do that you like your athletes healthy, right? Yes, <laughs> because you're only going to be as healthy as you are day one in practice. After that, trainer, physical therapist, we need you, man, right? Exactly. So she's on the same page in brick as us coaches. She rehabilitates them. She um, preventive stuff. I mean, they got the state-of-the-art equipment, Coach, that we used to put ice in the, the tubs. And, the, you know, and all. they got, like, tubes that you go in there and there's no ice. It's just incredible. But they have high-tech equipment for us. And um, were you did you ever get injured when you played? In college, my senior year, I dislocated my shoulder. Oh, wow. And, and you – I mean, you had good people helping you get back on the field, too, right? Of course, of course. I redshirted, but yeah, the whole year I, was, I lived in the training room and did a fantastic job at Southern University. So I know all about rehab and getting yeah. back on the field and taking care of yourself. Some people don't realize that if they didn't play sports, that, like, you know, that's a recovery period that not only is for your body, but for your mind. mind. For your mind, mind. right? Mind. Yes, sir. She's awesome, and we're going to be talking so much about her throughout all the weeks. She'll, she'll be our our main title sponsor for the whole year. I'm excited. So um, we also added one more to the dream team, I call it. Scott Stump is back. Scott Stump is back. And he brought the pen, and he's ready to do some articles on everybody. So you get ready, because he'll be in Long Branch many times, I I would think. But Scott Stump is back from a seven-year layoff. Um, so I'm excited about having both of them, AccuCare and Scott Stump. 
making the short football report even better. So yeah. we're loaded. The short yeah. football yeah. report is loaded right now. <laughs> now, let's talk about you and Long Branch football. First, about you. Um, what a process. I love the process. You and I have talked many times in the off season on the phone, but I mean, listen, you're replacing a legend. You're right. That, that's awesome. Danny George is, is a legend, a guy that I looked up to for many, many years. I think he coached you too, right? Yes, sir. Yes, at sir. Ocean, yes, right? Sir. Yeah. I mean, it says a lot. You played for him at Ocean and now you went with him to Long Branch, but take us to your first stops at coaching and how you got to be the head coach at Long Branch. Oh man. I, at first I was really in the sales business. I was working at a uh, open road BMW in Edison and I was selling cars, but Saturday morning's a big sales day, but you'd also <laughs> often find me in front of the TV watching college football. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I always had the itch to get back in the football. When I had the itch, I reached out to coach George. He said, he'd love to have me. So I did my part as far as getting back into education, going back to school, going the alternate route, and Coach George welcomed me with open arms. So that's awesome. To be back. So how long have you been with you were with Coach George the whole time? So I've been with Coach George for eleven years. This will be my twelfth year here. So talk about being loyalty. Back, being right back to Long Branch, the power professional. I was the defensive backs coach and been here since day one. Awesome. So awesome. Years. At what point did you say to yourself that you wanted to be a head coach? Oh, man, it wasn't until the rumors were swirling about Coach George leaving and someone else brought it to my attention. Really? Those were never my intentions. I kind of just wanted to come back and make a change wherever I could see fit and add value. And then uh, just the way things kind of fell out or fell into place, I should say, my name was being brought up. They liked the way I, I, my relationship with the kids. They liked what I was doing off the field with the kids. I taught elementary school. So all the, the class of 23, they were my first, second grade class here right. at home. So Shamar and those guys at like seven, eight years old were in my, my class for 180 days. Talk, so, t talk about, um, Coach, you never could be prepared to be a head football coach or be like a dad until you are one of them. I would never forget driving my, my, my baby and my wife home for the first time on, on the parkway. And I was so nervous, man. And I drove the parkway millions of times. But the responsibility you have like as a head coach or a dad is immense. You know, yeah. you want to make sure everything's perfect. And, um, you know, you've known those guys since elementary school. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So It's special. I, I, yeah, I've known them for a long time. So going on about 10 years now. So when you, with those guys and the kids. when you got announced as a head football coach, social media was blown up with so much endorsement from your players. And that showed a lot about you and, 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 and the program. Because they could have gone to an outside guy and – you never know what would have happened all that, but they made the right choice and they made the right choice. And you could tell by watching those guys work for you and your great staff in the summer. I mean, it was great, man. You guys are really transitioning real well. Yeah, yeah that, that was big. That was big hiring from what's in, kind of keeping some continuity with the staff mm -hmm. and having relationships with the kids already. So bringing somebody in from the outside, you, you got to understand the kids. And being that myself and three other coaches, we all work in the elementary levels. We've seen these kids coming up, so we yeah. have relationships. So as Coach George was moving on, me moving into a spot was a bit of a transition. But as far as the relationship and the bond that we had with the kids, that was already there. So we had some sort of a foundation moving forward. It's great. And the transition has been smooth, what you said, right? I mean, that part has been smooth. The behind the scenes football stuff that I didn't know about <laughs> is, <laughs> is what's getting me. But as far as the day to day football stuff, that's been smooth. I'm sure you didn't realize how many media people are out there. Wait, like, what? Oh, <laughs> Emails I got to check in the summertime, phone calls, text messages, it's a lot. When you get to be a head coach, it's amazing how many people laugh at your jokes um, or friends with you until you make that first call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to kind of stay off of social media. We got Middletown South first, so I'm trying to keep a low profile. <laughs> well, Coach, we got a lot of interesting things to talk about, um, you know. Um, you're an interesting story, and we're going to learn more about you when you start talking about Long Branch football. You ready to talk talk Long Branch football? Yes, sir. Let's yes, go. sir. Let's go. Coach, I'm going to rip this mask off, and I don't ever want to talk about pods, mask, or that COVID word, whatever it is. So no more. Back to normal. 
back to normal we're going to talk about in the offseason. Those poor seniors for two years. So after their freshman football season had no regular normal offseason workouts. Now, a positive thing is you didn't have to reteach your program because you just got hired. You got hired when, in December? January 20th. January. So that's a good time. So now you're installing what your program is going to look like in the offseason. Can you walk us through what a normal offseason would look like under your direction? <laughs> like I said, there is no offseason. It may not be football season, yeah. but there is no offseason. So one of the things that we wanted to focus on with our guys was you got to participate in a winter sport and a spring sport. Because doing so, everybody on staff has all the winter sports covered and all the spring sports covered. So you'll be around us at all times, academically and athletically. So we wanted guys to participate in the winter and spring sport, and the majority of our guys did. That way we have hands on them. They're around good men, whether it's myself or the wrestling staff, the basketball coach or Coach mm-hmm. Tyler, or, or, or they're playing spring baseball with Coach Bully, who's also our whole line coach, or they're running spring track with myself or playing lacrosse. They got hands on, they're working out, they're involved, and they're active. So that was a big part of our off-season program moving forward this year. Now, I love when you said multiple sports because, you know, kids need to compete. And when they're competing, they're better academically. Yes, yes. Right? A lot of, a lot of, some people, if you're not in athletics, you don't understand how, how big of a correlation there is to athletics and academics. A lot of our kids come to school to play sports. Yes. So when they have that little incentive, like, all right, I'm here to play football, but I got to go to class. Yeah. You don't hold it over their head, but they understand what their purpose is. Like, listen, if I don't do right in the classroom, I can't play. Today. So big incentive as far as academically and intertwined with academics and athletics. Now the athletes that aren't playing sports, because not everybody plays three sports. We know that. Um, that that's fine. But in the weight room, um, you know, how was it seeing kids lifting and working out and high-fiving and hugging each other and, you know, getting better in the weight room? How was it? So one of the things that we wanted to do was to show the kids that hard work actually works, and it's a lot more fun to work hard when you're doing it with your friends. Yeah. So we were getting about 17 to 20 guys in the van, taking them over to the SS Sports Performance with Coach Val Barney, we was. Oh, wow. We started that in January, and the guys bought in. So the big the offseason, one of our biggest strides was to buy in to the hard work, especially not being able to see the results until July or August, but just knowing that it'll come and trust in the process. So. Yeah trying to instill that in our younger guys and our older guys, because as you said, our seniors now coming into our, their sophomore year, there was no off season. Right. We, we, we literally had chain locks on our weight room, couldn't get in the building, <laughs> couldn't practice. And some of our guys don't have the resources they have that, 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 that other towns may have. So there was no working out. So the running jokes among those guys was like, you guys are pretty much going from AYF to varsity. <laughs> and then on top of that came the schedule change with COVID, and it was like, all right, not only are you guys going from freshman or AYF to varsity, right. you got Middletown South, RBC, Minor Day, Manalapin, yeah. right yeah. off the bat. So. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that uh, schedule. Yeah, so you yeah. you, cha- you guys chained the weight room? Yeah, not me personally. So yeah. long story short, myself and Coach Brown were in the weight room <laughs> after everything was shut down for COVID, not knowing what COVID was. Somebody sees us, he's like, oh, you can't be in here. We're like, okay, we didn't know, so we leave. And then we come to find out after that there was chains on the way. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good that you have to keep guys out because there are some programs that keep the door wide open and nobody shows up. So so when you're locking the doors, it's telling me guys want to get in the weight room and all that stuff. But, Coach, what, what, a, what a wacky two years it was for not only the players but for everybody in the world. It was just crazy. Yes, sir. Crazy. Right? So, uh, well, it's good to be back that we don't have to wear a mask, even though that we are, you know, precautionary in a lot of things. My question to you is, when you say you have a meeting with everybody, do people question you virtually or in person, or is it always in person now? I do in person, because you really can't take the temperature of a room through Zoom. I've right. had tons of PDs and professional developments over Zoom, and there's nothing like being in person. So You're right. anything that we do football wise is, is in person. Awesome. So when you say you have a meeting, no questions. It's just what room? No questions. We're in the pride room. Nice. Good take, Coach. All right, Coach. Let's talk about 
the Long Branch High School football coaching staff for the 2022 season. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So, starting the offensive side of the ball, you have Greg Penta and Coach Ben Woolley. They're our offensive coordinators. Coach Penta is also the position coach for the quarterbacks. Coach Woolley also coaches the O-line. And they've been calling the offense for the past four or five years now. Oh, that's and awesome. Chris George was a big delegator of responsibility. But from coming from trust, she's, she's trusted this guy. So one of the things that I've taken from Coach George was developing and building trust in the guys around us to be able to delegate and own the job going to get done. Awesome. Um, who are the other guys on your staff? New addition to the offensive side of the ball, Coach Devron Clark. He's the head freshman football coach. He'll be a position coach for the receivers on the varsity level. Coach Gary Bedeau, he's going to be the running backs coach. He's new to the staff this year. He actually went to my uh, alum, uh, university, Stony Brook University. Mm-hmm. So he's an alumni there. So we have that background and connection and bond from there. Defensively, Coach Ryan Burgess, who's from Ocean Township, like I was from. We played high school football together. He's the D-line coach strength and conditioning, as well as Coach Val Barnaby, who's the new defensive coordinator mm-hmm. and linebackers coach. Coach Jace Maxwell, a graduate of Rowan University, a big track guy coming from Donovan Catholic. He's going to be the defensive backs coach and help out the special teams also. And then we have uh, Jordan Rodriguez. He's going to help with the quarterbacks on the offensive side of the ball and all the, all the video and recording. And then we have Billy George also as an assistant volunteer. And Jamil Pitts, who's also doing a little bit of everything. He's going to be the freshman defensive coordinator, but he's been helping with the linebackers, D-line, the secondary, the special teams, and an integral part of them, not just the team, but the community here in Long Branch as far as in the building and outside of the building. So we put together a great staff. Ooh, yeah. Hopefully I'm not missing anybody. But And Dr. Colbert, uh, Dr. Damon Colbert, we have a licensed social worker on staff also. Really? Oh, because wow. we were talking about the new normal, the new the normal coming out from COVID to where yeah. we are now. So we want to make sure we hit all the needs of our students, whether it's social, emotional, physically, mentally, spiritually. So we have him on staff also. Awesome. I got two things I want to hit. First, I like what you told me that you combine varsity and freshman together. Yes, sir. I think that's awesome. Talk about why you do that and and how do you do that briefly. And um, it's interesting because a lot of people out there would probably love to hear it. So one of the reasons why is COVID hit us pretty hard. So we, we lost a lot of numbers. As a group for a school, last year we ended with 33 kids at Ocean City in the state semifinal game. Right, so right. One of the things that we want to do is keep everybody together, keep everybody on one accord. And then that also gives our, our freshman coaches the ability to coach everybody. And it also lets our freshmen, our sophomores, up to the seniors get coached every single day by coaches who have a vested interest in what's going on. And there's no like, oh, well, you're a freshman, you got to do this. So we keep everybody together just to build the foundation of learning the basics as a freshman coming in, keeping everybody together to build some unity, some team bonding, and it makes for a better practice. Exciting creates excitement. We don't have freshmen going against seniors, but at the same time, the yeah. freshmen are learning the same systems as our seniors are, mm-hmm. and keeping everybody together keeps keeps it exciting. What's your numbers going to be like then having freshmen and se- seniors, approximate? Approximately. So on paper, we have 82 signed up in the program. So Good. Freshmen to seniors. So around uh, 70, probably. Yeah, about 70. And those are kids on paper. How many yeah. we get out in the summer, we'll see. But even if we can get to 70 within the freshman anniversary program, those are good numbers to have. And what did you have last year, freshman to senior? Last year, freshman, we had about 22. That's, a, that's not a bad number. The varsity, we ended with 33. Okay. So you got your numbers up. Yeah, we got our numbers up. We got our numbers up. I'm in the high school now. I was in the elementary school previously. Mm-hmm. So being in the high school, the kids seeing me trying to create a spark around the program and doing some recruiting in the hallway. Good for you. Good for you. Last thing I want to hit is, listen, everybody outside uh, knows that you were a D coordinator. You were the dude um, for Coach George. Um, I always found it interesting in the NFL when they hire a coordinator and then they say, okay, I'm going to just be the head coach and I delegate and somebody else. So, you know, Todd Bowles, member for the Jets, he yeah. came in, you know, you got all these high profile guys that were like, yes. And then they give somebody else a coordinated position. You delegated. Um, tell me yeah. what your role is going to be in the game plans. Now that you delegate as the head coach to all your coordinators. Um, I'm definitely going to have an every, a hand in everything. Um, before this season, I ran the defense and I called the special team. So two out of the three phases of the game, right. I was really involved with. Good. So as far as moving forward this year, Coach Val Barnaby, 
Uh, great guy, and uh, one of the things we know, we got to be able to stop the run. So with him having the experience with the D-line, the linebackers, us putting our minds together, as well as with Coach Burgess, Coach Pitts, I think we'll be okay. Coach Val will have an understanding of what I'd like to do, how, and why. Mm -hmm. This will be you can make the calls, but we'll all be in one court. I like that. I like that. Having a plan, doing it, it's going to free you up. It's going to free you because you know there's going to be a lot more attention now to you, right? Where's the head coach? He's over there. Where's the head coach? I got to talk to the head coach. You know, administrator comes in. Where's Coach King? I got to talk to him. Now you're not coordinating. You can actually talk to all the other stuff that you never have in your schedule for your practices, right? Uh, wow. <laughs> and that was one of the things that being under Coach George, I learned a lot. Just having trust and faith in the guys that you surround yourself yeah. with, knowing that they can get the job for you, done for you, with you, while you're there, while you're not there, and, and, and be coaching. So those right. guys that we have on staff, have the utmost respect, trust, and trust for knowing that, that we're going to be okay moving forward and our kids are in good hands. I love it, Coach. The transition where you're now the head coach, you're now going to be the head coach and you're delegating. Your numbers are up almost 30, um, and you're going to have a, your hands on the fingerprints. Now, those freshman kids are going to know you. They don't need to transition to Varsity. They are with you the whole time. I like that idea. I do. And, and mm -hmm. one, one thing before, just to piggyback on it, once again, Three or, three or four of our coaches teach at the elementary school. So we have a foundation with and relationship with those kids already. Yeah. So bringing them up when they see us is like, oh, where you been? But we have a relationship with those guys. So now they get to see us in a different light and now they're older and more mature. So I like it. I like it. And you know, bonding with the players goes a lot on the field, too. Yeah. All right, coach, let's talk Long Branch Green Wave football schedule for the 2022 season. On the left is your schedule, on the right, is your new division that we'll talk about in a second. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Schedule, man. We open up with a bang. Middletown South, Coach Antonucci, those guys coming off the deep run into the playoffs last year. They're always tough. That, that, that program speaks minds in itself. So September 10th, September 2nd is a big day for us. Oh, yeah. Home opener, new stadium, new scoreboard, new season, new coach. So we're excited, but we're also realistic. We know the challenge that we have ahead of ourselves. Those guys have a great staff. They got great players. They're physically tough all the time, mentally tough, very disciplined. So we, we know we have our work cut out for us. And then there's no there's no <laughs> there's no bye weeks except for the little bye week we have. Oh, I know. Basically, Coach Priscillo, Coach Donnie went Southern, Tom Zimmer North is probably gonna be one of the <laughs> top teams in the state. Yeah. Coach Middleton, Coach Steve Bush at Middletown North had has some ties to the NFL, Coach Duff. Is rebuilding that Neptune program, Central with Coach Prison, that running back coming back, and Red Bank, they're always tough as a Thanksgiving Day game. So there really <laughs> is no bye weeks except for the September 29th, that week we have all. Yeah. But there's no easy games on the schedules from the types of programs that we're playing to the Hall of Fame coaches. I saw you had Coach Donahue, mm -hmm. the program that I was watching before, and he's what? Elected into the South Jersey Hall of Fame, Shore Conference Hall of Fame, New Jersey Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, yeah, we got our work cut out for us all across the schedule. Yeah, you know, I think you stole my notes because everything you were saying was what I had written down. But uh, let's talk about the division, a colonial division, and the ads out there kind of put comparable teams together, and there's no cream puffs. It's everybody from top to bottom is like, wow. I mean, you could shake that around, and your number, it's going to be hard to pick who's going to finish first to six. In a order. Of, a lot of parity within the division. Yeah. Uh, Tom's River North, they had a deep run in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Central Regional had a great year last year. Lacey had a great year last year. Middletown North, mm -hmm. Southern. Like, there's no down week. And, and the coaches, the names of the coaches speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. the names on a helmet speak for a as far as the tradition within the program. Yeah. So we do have a work cut out for us within the Colonial Division. You do. We're and, excited for it. And, and add yourself to the mix, because I saw – a lot of these teams or slash players at seven on sevens at camps. And uh, I came across just looking at this division of players and teams like, wow, there's some dudes and graduation kids graduate. New kids are coming in. Other kids get bigger, stronger, taller, like your team has too. And there's a lot of talent, talent. I know we have great coaches, there, but talent coach uh, in this division. Definitely, definitely a lot of talent top to bottom. And for us, some new, so get to see a chance to see some new teams. We don't usually play a Lacey or a Southern or a Central. Mm -hmm. Tom Drummond North was on a schedule a couple of years ago. 
Middletown North has always given us fits, always a tough game for us. And it's, it's going to be extremely exciting, extremely exciting. That's like what you, you, said, that's what you want. Load. That's what you want, though, right? Of course, of course. We're up for the challenge, we're, but we're realistic. But we're definitely up for the challenge. We don't plan on backing down from anybody, and we're going to respect our opponents. Yeah, that, uh, that is real exciting. Every week is going to be a game of the week or could be a game of the week for a lot of different media's outlets. All right, what can we be looking for offensively and defensively your schemes this season with you as the head coach? <laughs> On the off offensive side of the ball, we got a lot of playmakers. So our goal is to get them the ball as much as we can <laughs> and go with the hot hand, whether it's Sekou, Shamar, Ernest himself, Zaheen. Michael Hall. Michael Hall. We just want to be able to get those guys <laughs> the ball in space and let them make plays for us. So, Good. offensive coordinator. We try not to put too much emphasis on seven on seven, but knowing that we have the ability with the new quarterback and Ernest JV to be able to drop back and pass on the first down, not because we have to, but because we want to, mm -hmm. it, it kind of sets us up and gives us the ability to do a, a bunch of things on offense. So, seven on seven, Ernest showed us that he can throw the ball. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get those guys the ball as much as possible. That's our goal for the season. We we talked uh, uh, briefly at one of the seven on sevens, and you didn't say it. You smiled, and then you I knew you were you were excited with what you were watching. But yeah, everybody always goes, "Ah, eh, it's only seven on sevens." But what I saw during the seven on sevens is you got some ball players. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I guess that's where the coaching comes in. Because we have to find some guys and make sure we can get to Ernest some time to throw. And yeah. find some guys we can get Sekou and Michael Hall and Zaheem Brown about six inches of space so they can do what they do. Yeah, best. that just that's all they need is that. But uh, yeah, don't you much. Yeah, I like that. I like just let those guys be athletes and get them the football. And us coaches, that's find a way to do it, right? Exactly. And er Ernest Reevy has uh, stepped up to the plate. He's done a phenomenal job this summer. He's also one of those kids that kind of bought in into the off season. Mm -hmm. Ran indoor track for us, ran outdoor track for us. So we spent a lot of time together these last six months of just preparing for, for the season. So we're excited for, for his seal. He was flexing uh, like this on the sidelines. I said to him, I said, what do you play, guard or tackle? He looked at me like, <laughs> what? <laughs> we know that's not true, but God, man, if you ever went empty with him in the backfield, with the way he I'm like, oh, my God, you got to count for him like two people. Don't give away too much. All right. Ed. And defensively, man, we're just going to go with what, with, with, with what works. I mean, we're a 40 front, but we got to play what we have, you know? So we're going to line our defense from the personnel, from the kids, you know, not every year do we get Kevin Cerutis and, and those types of bodies up front. Mm -hmm. We just want a regular 40 or you have Luke Arnold to get that stud linebacker in the middle. So we're going to do with what works for our kids and put them in a position to play. So, if we got six or seven DBs on the field and they can tackle, we'll just get six or seven DBs around the line of scrimmage against those teams that like to run the football. But, you fit, then, you make uh, the we're, we're you, gonna do it works. You make the personnel. You you fit everything around your personnel. Yeah, Smart we're, we're gonna work around the kids. You know, um, just trying to get the numbers up from COVID. We have a couple of big bodies, a couple of new faces, so we're gonna see what those guys can do up front. And I think you said it best, man. If we can figure out those guys up front. We could have a chance to be okay, but we all know that the game's not one in seven on seven, and everything's one in the trenches. So what we're going to do is if we got to yeah. put nine in the box, no matter who it is, we'll put nine in the box. We get if we get teams into passing situations, that'll be great because you got Shamar, mm -hmm. say Q, Mikey, Ernie. But we all know that the game's one up front. Up so front, yeah. Whatever, I mean, whatever we have to do on defense, we'll do to ensure yeah. that we can get to some passing situations where. Teams in our, in our All right, Coach, I love this part that I added into our preview shows was top position groups. I think it's special that, um, you know, teams don't have just one player, you know, at a position. It's position groups. You need groups of people, and that makes you have the strength of your team. So I broke down Long Branch. You ready? Yes, All right. You and I have not talked, but I broke you guys down, and I got a chance to see you a couple times. So I feel pretty good about this. Now, um, offensively, let's talk offense, defense, special teams. But I think the strength of your team offensively is your backfield. And let me say why. Ernest Reevy, we all know, you and I know that he is a dude. And he's one of the top athletes in the short conference. And he's a big, strong athlete that can sling the ball. Um, he can run it. But Ernest Reevy, a junior, a quarterback, Zaim Brown, Saku Camus. Um, 
I mean, he he's like a sleeper out there, but he's yeah. a, a big time Division One player. And then uh, Olander Daniels is a special name too. Those four dudes at quarterback, running back, I think were your strength. I do like your receivers too, but I just think this is your strength, your quarterback, running backs. Yes, yes. Life, when you can hand those guys a ball, <laughs> yeah, it makes life easy. And you, when you have two guys in a quarterback that can run, yeah. I mean, Zaheem came out of nowhere last year and had a great year. I'm talking about like – At the end of the year, run. he really he really did yeah. – Yeah. Yeah. Like, Junior uh, now, yeah. One of the coaches and I were laughing like, listen, if he can get us three or four yards, we're happy. And he was like – he made a joke like Zaheem never had a three or four-yard run last year. Everything was nine, yeah. 40. So we're going to get him more involved, make sure he's involved early. And then you got the sleeper, like you said, say Ku Kamal. Quiet, but, oh, man, he, he's, a, he's a game. He's not a sleeper on the field, though. But I'm just yeah. saying you, you you kind of forget, like, this is the dude, man. This is the this is the pulse, this guy. Yeah. He yeah. can play yeah. everywhere. Very quiet on the field, but his action speaking for himself. <laughs> say Ku is going to be special. Yeah, he's I, be he, he is special defensively. I think your strength is a bunch of names that we just talked about, and and I saw him in the seven on seven, and, and I don't think you're going to dispute it. Is your DBs? You got Ernest Reeve, that class of 2024. Shamar Williams is one of the top players in the short conference, without a doubt. A corner safety could play anywhere. That guy, love him. Um, Akil Gaines. Uh, yes, right, Akil Gaines is now here. He's a senior, right? Senior, yes, He's sir. a senior. Saku Kamu, uh, safety, right? Those guys, uh, and I think Zayn Brown even plays a little bit too, right? Zayn plays a little bit of safety outside linebacker, and once again, Orlando Daniels. And Orlando Daniels, yes, uh, at defensive back. Tell me about that that unit. Oh man, <laughs> well, a lot of those guys had to start as sophomores. So they played a lot of football. Yeah. And then coming into the seven on seven, it's good for them to get a lot of work. They kind of, they kind of did what was expected, man. They didn't make any, um, no coverage, no blown coverages, no deep balls. So that was one of the things that we wanted to focus on going mm-hmm. into seven on seven. Make sure everybody was on the same page. Don't give up any big plays. Keep everything in front of us, and we'll tackle it up and just play fast. So we're we're excited about the back end, but we're really excited about the front end of our defense because. Once again, everything starts up front. Yeah. But with those guys not letting everything by, or anything behind them and keeping everything in front of us, we should be pretty fast. It allow, allows you to, to be a little uh, risk-taking up front when you have yeah. DBs like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. I like that. Coach, special team-wise, I think your strength is your kick returners and punt returners. And I'm going to make a prediction. I don't think too many people are going to want to kick it deep. you got three guys back. You have Michael Hall, who's one of the most explosive kids out there. He's a receiver and a return specialist who's got multiple touchdowns. Um, Saku Kamu back there, all right, and Ernest Reeve. So you got three dudes who are top-level guys that are returners. I dare them to kick it deep. (laughs) (laughs) But – do you get a lot of squib kicks, or do you do you assume you might we get some? We get a lot of squib kicks. Teams put it on the ground because of those guys yeah. back there. But I, I let them know, like, listen, if it's in the air, field it. If they kick it on the ground, we're starting with good field position anyway. So it's kind of a win-win for us. But we'd like to kick – I personally, as a coach, we'd like me to kick it deep and let those guys make us look good. <laughs> but they're going to squib and kick it away from those guys. It's a testament to them, and it just gives us good field position. What would happen if you put all three of them in the front line? Now you got to kick it deep because you don't want to squib. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. You know, maybe put Ingram back deep or something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was trying to catch some kickoff returns in practice. <laughs> yeah, and we'll talk about him a little bit later. But um, yeah, those are three. Those are the three strengths I think of your team. I think it's your backfield. And listen, there's a close second on each one of these. Your your backfield, your defensive backfield, and your returners. I think yeah. that's that kind of says and, it. And quietly, we have Wesley Garcia. This will be his second year playing football. He did a phenomenal job for us kicking the ball last year, scoring a bunch of points with extra points and field goals, put the ball where we wanted to on kickoff. He's coming back. So anytime you have a good kicker in place, it's a weapon, especially in high school football. He was consistent, and when I did it, I knew he was good. That shows how good the kick returners are. These guys are like game changers right there. But Garcia was very good as a sophomore, like you said, very efficient. Very efficient. Yes, sir. Yep. Automatic. 
All right, Coach, let's hear about the 2022 returners and newcomers that you're excited about in your first year as head coach. Uh, one, one of the guys I'm excited about is Khalid Ingram. Kind of going under, the, flying under the radar a little bit. I don't know how, but at 6'3", 300-something <laughs> pounds, so flying under the radar, I guess, could be a, a gift and a curse. But we're expecting big things from Khalid this year on both sides of the ball, offensive and defensively. Good. He's been having a great offseason, under the radar, putting in time in the weight room, getting stronger, losing some weight, getting more and more mobile. <laughs> Because at 6'3", 300 pounds, you got to be able to move. Coach, I'm going to make a prediction. Next year at this time, he's going to have a lot of attention from Division One schools. Without a doubt. That kid's a big, big, good-looking kid. Yeah. Hey, Kalik's, Kalik's a dude. Kalik's a dude. Big guy, quick feet, can dance, can move. So, looking forward to big things from him this year. Just had to mature a little bit. Yeah. Um, Luke Arnold. One of our leaders, maybe not the vocal leader, but he's one of those glue guys for the team as far as just doing all the little things that don't get seen on a day-to-day basis. His name's not being called over the loudspeaker, kind of not getting all the credit mm-hmm. that he deserves. But Luke's going to be a staple in our offense and the defensive line. Had a solid junior campaign for us. And one of those guys who's a wrestler, football player, so he'll be, on a, he'll be one of the anchors and leaders of our offensive and defensive lines. Good. And then uh, you got Hassan Bryant. He's coming back a three-year starter at the middle linebacker for us. And Hassan is just one of those guys that can can be can and will be huge for us. We're expecting big things for him to kind of anchor that defense. I know a lot of the a lot of the talk is about the back end, but um, up front, Hassan's, Hassan's going to be getting those guys lined up and ready to go to make sure that we can stop the run and the attacks of Tom's River North, the Lacy's, the Southerns, yeah. the Tom South, and Central Regionals. Hopefully I'm not leaving anybody out. But um, what else? When you talked about Seku, you talked about Shamar, you talked about Ernest Reeve. We have a new addition in the Keel games. We're expecting big things for him. He came, kind of came in and fit in right away. Zaheem Brown flew under the radar, but we we know what he, he can bring to the table, so we're going to make sure that we get him involved early on. And then you got guys like um, Dylan Blunt, Esau Walker. Esau's a big track guy, so... Mm-hmm. We know that he's going to play an integral part of our special teams and running down, making tackles on kickoff for us. And then Bryce Bryce Gordon is one of our offensive linemen, kind of flying under the radar. You got Joseph Corley, one of the top newcomers coming in. We're expecting big things from Joseph I like Corley him. Yeah. on the defensive side of the ball. We have a couple of seniors coming out for the first time. Like I said, I was doing some recruiting in the hallways. You got Danny Velez, who's never played football before, but a good-looking kid. And one of those guys we're expecting big things from as opposed to the guys that you hear about all the time. So we're, we're excited. Everybody's bought in. They're coming together. They don't. They understand that hard work works. And we kind of been talking about guys embrace the suck because it's not fun waking up at 6 a.m. every day and having to be at the high school earlier than you would during the school year in the summertime. Yeah. But they're starting to see the results of their hard work and the fruits of their labor coming to light now, especially now that we're getting closer to football season. So we're, we're really excited. Coach, we um, when I was coaching, I always said I needed 16 players. So we had to find 16 players that I said, if we have 16, we're going to be okay. If we have 18, we're going to be very good. So you you named a lot more than 16 players, which I like. And there was always a, pl- a player or two that we said, if we can make one of these two guys a player, we're going to be okay. And yeah. I, right, And you as a coach, you're seeing that more now as a head coach too, right? Like yeah. we need – you two, one of you to be a lineman. You three, one and a half of you to be a spec, right? And that's and, yeah. and and by adding depth to your team with your numbers growing too, is just right. going to make it a lot a lot easier for you, right? And, and with the schedule that we have, you, you're going to need some depth. Yeah, it's kind of like a black and blue division we got coming up, so we're going to need some depth. And the name that we, the name that may be thrown around during the season is a Dylan Blunt. Yeah, he played secondary for us last year. We're moving him up to outside linebacker to give us some depth at that linebacker Good. spot. Mateus Marcos is going to be a senior, kind of under the radar, one of those program type of guys who does everything you ask, does mm-hmm. everything the right way. So he's one of those guys that when you asked about, like, what are we doing defensively? Mateus isn't a linebacker. He's not a defensive end. So we're going to figure out a spot where he can help us. So guys like that, like you said, that can yeah. take it from being okay to being good, especially when you're trying to develop players, a program, and build some depth. Yeah, I loved hearing your voice when we talk on the phone. Certain guys, when I asked you about them, how they improved so much in the offseason, like you were like, wow. But when kids turn to switch from their sophomore to junior, it could be the junior to senior, it could be maybe 
you know, three months we haven't seen them during a COVID port, but it's incredible to see them grow. When you stepped on the football field for the first time in the summer, did you say to yourself, hey, he looks a lot better. This kid looks a little more confident. That kid, you're seeing it from a different view now? Have you so, seen that? So for me, I coach indoor track. I coach outdoor track. So a lot of those guys I, I had with me. So when you see him every day, you may not see it as yeah. much, but it was more so the other coaches when they're yes. like, wow, Sham looks good. Wow, Khalif looks good. Wow, yes. he looks good. Wow, Sekou looks fast. And then hearing it from the kids, like I, I was having a conversation with Sekou because he's one of those guys that had a great off season and he ran spring track as well as with Sham and Ernie. And I was like, Sekou, mm -hmm. Coach Penta said you look fast. And Sekou is not a man of many words. He was like, I feel fast. <laughs> so just hearing it from them. <laughs> you're right. Them. I know what you're yeah. saying. I, I know what you're saying. The other coaches who haven't seen them, physically they look different too, right? Yeah. yeah. That's good. So That's the I best part of coaching. Exactly. exactly. I think when, when kids are improving on and off the field, I think, you know, the wins are going to happen, you know, you know, here or there. But, you know, that's great. You got great things going on there, Coach. I'm happy for you. I really am. Thanks, um, from the time you got hired to now, man, you're doing great things. You know, uh, yeah. your expectations are really high, which rightfully so, because you're Long Branch. <laughs> you know, right? You're. You're Long Branch, man. You have a lot invested in the program, and the players are invested in the coaches and, you know, in what's ahead of them. So, yeah, a lot of great things, a lot of a lot of great stuff coming out of your program, Coach. So, Thank you. The kids are excited, man. The kids are excited. They put in a lot of work. And it's like football is one of those sports, like Coach Burgess always says, you watch the NFL, those guys get paid millions of dollars, but it's not for what they do on Sunday. It's for practice. So – for us, we try to emphasize the practice part of it, let them know that hard work works, and seeing them come together and buy into coming to practice, showing up at time, 6 a.m., 6.30, four days a week. So we're, we're interested in having them see the fruits of their own labor. They'll be making all their money when they sign a college. You ever hear these kids oh, with man. the NIL? Where was yeah. that when we played? I know, I know, I know. It's so funny because I think the NIL is hitting the high school. It's coming down. It's coming down. You got kids now that are discounts for these businesses. Use my code and they get money. That's an NIL. Yeah. Right? Yes, like everybody's making money with their likeness, their name now. So it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> Good and bad. I guess yeah. it's a necessary evil because the NCAA was making so much yeah. off of the kids, name, image, and likeness. So it's only right for those kids to benefit also. But I'm, I'm sure there's some unforeseen things that we yeah. don't see just yet coming down in the future <laughs> that may need to be regulated. Well, when but, the when the players are making three times the amount of money as the coaches now. And haven't played a snap football. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, you got guys in Alabama that won't go to the pros because they don't want to lose money. Think of that. There's guys in the NFL that said they would have stayed in college. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that might help the game of football in college, yeah, Coach. Definitely could. Definitely. Well, Coach, a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, you know, it's always an exciting time, your first first time being a head coach. So enjoy the moment. Enjoy every – that's my – only thing I can say is enjoy the moment because uh, these are great times. You know, you're going to miss them when they're gone. Yes, sir. I'm trying, trying, to, stay, trying to stay grounded. Kind of stay grounded, stay present. Yeah, you you have a good presence to yourself. Like you don't seem to. Maybe I'm wrong, but you don't seem to get overly, you know, high or overly low. You keep an even keel. Is that true? Or is, exactly. oh, I'm going to find that out when I talk to the players in a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to be too up, try not to be too down. I got to be here. They just message me. They're, they're, they they just message me. They're bringing their A game. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> All right, coach. Be good. Um, you know, rooting for you. You you know, you're one of the you're one of the good guys out there, and I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing sharing your thoughts on your program. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. I appreciate the time. I'll talk to you soon, coach. Yes, All right. Now we have three Long Branch senior football players who are gentlemen on and off the field. Actually, your animals on the field, your gentlemen off the field. Is that what you say? Good. Let me introduce you guys and let's get right into it. To the left. We have Mike Hall, a wide receiver, kick returner, punt returner. Just wave your hand, Mike. Right in the middle. We have Saku Kamau, 
a running back, safety, kick returner, punt returner. Did I say the name right? Yes. Yes. Yes, this is going to be great. And then to the right, we have Shamar Williams, a wide receiver slash safety. Guys, thank you for com- thanks for coming on the show. Ten minutes. It's going to be ten minutes. That say it might be twelve if you kind of go with it a little bit more. But we're going to have fun. I know okay. all about you guys on the field. I know all about you guys on the field. I know you're outstanding athletes, and you're all going to be in my top positional players list rankings, without a doubt, on the high end. But I want to know stuff about Long Branch from inside the locker room. We're going to have fun with it, and I'm going to ask you guys some questions. So let's go. First question, who is the funniest dude in, on Long Branch's team? I want it. You're smiling. So you're going to say, who's the funniest dude on your team that just makes everybody smile when you need to smile? Because it's nothing wrong with laughing when you're on the field. And I saw you during. Wait a minute. I saw you. I saw you guys during the seven on sevens. You guys were having fun uh, there, too. So who keeps it real? Shamar. Shamar? Yeah. (laughs) So he's the he's the funny dude. Yeah. He's the trash talker and makes everybody laugh? Yes. <laughs> so when Coach King comes into the room, do you guys all like shh, shh with all the giggles? Uh, Coach King, like, he's he funny coach too. Yeah. Like, he accepts us who we are. All right, good. So he kind of laughs with you, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with having fun, guys, with that. Great. So I'm going to put a mental note. Shamar is the funny dude. Number two, who's the leader of your team when Coach King has a message that you guys send it out to your team? Say, hey, Coach King needs this done. Who's that guy? You're the you're the dude? Yeah. Right. That comes with a little responsibility. So everybody kind of waits for your text, right? Yeah, it's a responsibility. And what social media media platform do you guys use? Uh, we use Twitter. Instagram, Huddle, Not, Snapchat. Oh, Snapchat. I don't know how to do that thing. <laughs> no way. Yeah, and and, and what is it? Uh, we also use iMessage, too. Tickety talk. Is it TikTok or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> TikTok? All right, good. That's good to know. Good. It makes it makes uh, Coach King's job a lot easier when you got players that kind of echo out the same message for the coaches. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Number three. Back to normal, guys. You haven't had an off-season workout that was normal since your freshman football season. How great was it to be back to normal, doing what you guys love doing, working out and competing? It feels good. Like, we don't got to worry about nothing too crazy anymore. We're going practices, having fun, being close to each other. We don't got to stay six feet, make it awkward. It's- it was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good to be a family again. Like everybody back, but back to a normal schedule. No more canceled games. There's more, more games to play. More, more work to do. Seku, how 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 great was it to be back to uh, normal, um, working out with your athletes in the weight room and also on the track and in the wrestling room? How great was it? Good. Back to being funny again, really. Good. That's it. Good. And you guys know multiple sport athletes are are uh, definitely uh, preached in your program, right? Yeah. I know Coach King was talking about how you guys got so much faster running track. Yeah, yeah, in track, he got us all on the same program. We all bought into what he was saying, what he was trying to tell us, and we all ended up being good in the long run. Accomplishments. He, yeah. to- he told me his story, Seku, that, you know, he's your coach for track, that – he didn't realize it, but he went up to you and you said, I feel a lot faster this year. Yeah. Which is scary because you're pretty fast on the film that I saw already. Super scary. Speed, yeah. speed kills, right? Speed kills. Yeah, you guys definitely had it. Nice job. Number four, what are the expectations in the locker room? Not the coaches around, when you guys are around. Tell me what the expectations are at Long Branch with you guys. <laughs> The expectations are is everybody lock in, buy into what like we're saying. Everybody has a responsibility to do and to get it done for us to win. Yeah. So really. you're Long Branch. You win. That's what you do. Yeah. yeah, that's all we know. We take one game at a time. Yeah. One game at a time. 
Yeah, and you're the competition. You're right. Your 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 schedule is is is. I mean, and again, when they're talking about you guys, it's brutal. Like you guys are good, they're good. You got a a, a great schedule that can help you guys be prepared for the state playoffs. Yeah, we have a we have a tough schedule, but we, we we're we're gonna be prepared for it. We're aware. Yeah. Great. Last question, and this is a good one. Tell everybody out there why is it special to play at Long Branch under Coach King. Tell us what is it's what is because he you know, he brings out the best when you play with him, and he keeps it real, and you'll get your, you'll get the job done. He'll get you to get the job done. Yeah, we and it's fun. And we all knew Coach King since our first, like our second grade year was his <laughs> first year of teaching. We all was in second grade together in his class. So he yeah. said that. He said yeah, that. He yeah, we created that bond with him. For you years. got a bond. Yeah. yeah, and then for us, for him to come up and be our head coach, it's probably the best thing that happened to us. That had to be special when you heard the announcement that he was going to be the head coach. Yeah, we were excited. Yeah, super I, excited. I was excited. It seemed like everybody was excited. You know, you guys believe in the coach. You got him in there. It's his first year. He said he couldn't have a better group of seniors to start his first year, and that's what you guys, man. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoke a lot. Sitting on our back too. Oh yeah. So, guys, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I had five questions. I want, didn't want to take away from your summer. Make sure you guys follow the Shore Football Report. We got a lot of stuff going on. I just hired Scott Stump, and I know you don't know who he is, but I'm telling you right now, you will know who he is once he starts writing. He's big time. Okay. All right. We're you do your thing on the field, and we'll do our thing. We'll make sure we we connect because. You guys are going to be real good, and the Shore Football Report is going to be undefeated this year. Sure. We're going to be undefeated, all right? Thank you, you three, for coming on. And if you need anything, you need anything, give me a shout. Let's go. Thanks a lot, guys.